Hello, everybody, and welcome to Synergy Theatre Online. My name is Ken Adams. I'm the Artistic Director of Synergy Theatre, and I am absolutely honored and thrilled to be coming into your home and welcoming you to our virtual theatre for tonight's online presentation of the Improvised Museum of Art. We are coming to you via YouTube and Facebook, and as in all good improvisational theater, we are going to solicit some suggestions from you, our audience, in order to inspire our show tonight. So if you would like to interact with us and offer us some suggestions, then the way I'm going to ask you to do that is through your YouTube chat. And in order to do that, you're going to have to be logged into your YouTube account. So if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. You could just sit back and watch and enjoy the show. But if you're looking at us on YouTube, go ahead and log into your YouTube account if you want to interact with us. Now, you can also interact with us through Facebook. And I see that Ruby Adamowski is watching us through Facebook. So hello and welcome. And welcome to everybody else out there also. So you can also give us your suggestions through Facebook if you like to. Synergy Theatre provides full-length improvised theatre in a variety of genres and formats. And tonight, our performance, as I said, is the Improvised Museum of Art. We have three paintings hanging on a wall in a museum, and the play is about what those paintings have to talk about when nobody else is watching. So let me tell you just uh, briefly about the three paintings that we have tonight. Tonight, we have the very famous Mona Lisa that I'm sure everybody recognizes, one of the most famous paintings in the whole world. We have another wonderful painting called Woman with a Mango, and Woman with a mango is a picture of a beautiful girl in a flowing purple dress and she's holding a mango. And then we have self-portrait with death playing the fiddle. Self-portrait with death playing the fiddle and that is a haunting picture of the artist who is Arnold Brocklin painting a picture as the personification of death in the form of a giant skeleton playing a violin is whispering in his ear. So those are the three paintings we have tonight. And the reason I ask you, uh, tell you about those is because we are going to ask you for some suggestions for those paintings. So if you have an idea and there's something that you would like to uh, offer us, then like I said, I'm gonna ask you just to log into your YouTube account and then you can um, you can interact with us via YouTube. Okay, so it is time to ask uh, for your suggestions. And uh, here we go. The first suggestion that we are going to ask for is something that the paintings are debating. Some issue about life that the paintings are debating. And that can be anything from the meaning of life or death, or it can be something like um, just how do they really make a 20? So uh, go ahead and see if you can think of something that the paintings are debating, and then go ahead and put that in the chat. Um, it's going to take a little while for your uh, suggestions to roll up on our screen. So as we are doing that, I'm going to mention to you what our next suggestion is so that you can uh, think about that and offer us some suggestions uh, in the future as well. So uh, after we find out what the paintings are debating about, then I'm going to ask you, what is it that one of the characters feels about that issue? What is the emotion that one of the characters has that they are bringing to this debate about this issue? So the first thing is, what is something they are debating? And the other thing is, what is a way the people feel about that issue? And I see we have a suggestion popping up on that first one. And that comes from Karen Harrell. So thank you, Karen Harrell. And the issue that they are debating is, city life versus country life. What is better, city life versus country life? Awesome job, thank you. Okay, now for that second suggestion, what is the 
emotion. What is the feeling? And we're going to give this one to Mona Lisa. So what is the emotion that Mona Lisa is filled with as we drop into these characters in the middle of their debate about city life versus country life? And I see the suggestion is frustration. So for some reason, Mona Lisa is filled with frustration. And the other suggestion we're going to get, let's get this one for self-portrait with death playing the fiddle. And that is, you must imagine these portraits hanging on the wall in their museum all day long, looking at all of the various people who come to stare at them. There must be something that they are envious about, something that the people can do or that the people have that they don't because they're painting. So our next suggestion that I'm going to ask you for is what is that? What is it that self-portrait with death playing the fiddle is envious of when he looks out at the people who come to stare at him? So go ahead and give that a thought and pop it in there. As you are working on that one, I'll take a quick moment to mention that when Synergy Theater is out in the real world, we perform at the beautiful Dean Lesher Center for the Performing Arts in Walnut Creek, California. Now that we're here at home coming to you via YouTube and Facebook, we are very, very honored and delightful, delighted to be here every weekend, Thursdays at six o'clock and Fridays at seven o'clock for your pleasure. So uh, let's see. Okay. Oh, look at that. That's an awesome one. All right. Um, so Karen Harrell once again gives us a suggestion and that is longing for modern technology. The self-portrait with death playing the fiddle is longing for modern technology. Beautiful job. All right, my friends. So allow me to review our suggestions tonight. Uh, the characters are debating what is preferable city life or country life. And the Mona Lisa is particularly frustrated with this conversation for some reason, we'll find out why. And self-portrait with death playing the fiddle is envious of the human beings and their modern technology. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. Please sit back and enjoy tonight's presentation of the Improvised Museum of Art. Dear patrons, welcome to the Museum of Art. Lisa. The city makes me claustrophobic. That's oh, what... oh, Emma, come here, come here. Oh we my have... gosh. Bernard, here. it's the, it's here the it Mona is. Lisa. Yes. What does it say about the Mona Lisa on that yes. cluster there? The Mona Lisa is by Leonardo da Vinci, painted between 1503 and 1506. Oil on poplar panel. The Mona Lisa is considered to be an archetypal masterpiece and is often described as the most famous, most visited, and most written about work of art in history. Well, isn't she just beautiful? Oh, look at this one holding that thing. What is that? Um, Woman with a Mango by Paul oh. Young Yin, painted in 1892, oil on canvas. The painting depicts Teha Amana or Tehora, Gauguin's 13 year old wife and mother of his child. Gauguin returned to Paris before the birth, and by the time he returned, Tehora had remarried a local man with whom she brought up the child. He never saw them again. Wow. wow. Huh, hey, look at this one. Uh, what's it called? Arnold Brocklin's self-portrait with death playing the fiddle. He painted it in 1872, oil on canvas. It was painted in Mu Munich and it depicts a bearded Brocklin stalked by a 
personification of death playing a single stringed violin in a grim intimation of his own mortality. Whoa, that's weird. I know. Oh, hey, let's go look at that one over there. Oh, wait for me, hold on. Sorry, you were saying? Oh, the city just makes me claustrophobic. And I feel confined. That's why I'm so passionate and excited. I agree with you, Tahura. That I do not like city life at all, especially city people. They're very uninterested in taking their time to really observe each of us. They're very shallow. Both of you, you have no idea what it's like to be in an actual city. I know. Well, well, then tell us, Lisa. I mean, I've been dragged to cities. I've been hung in the most busiest of all cities, the Louvre. For people come thousands and thousands a day. Tahura, to talk about it makes me so irritated and frustrated. For many years, I languished at the Louvre myself. And I had a brief period of time in the country, but it wasn't until I was whisked away about 150 years ago by the only name that I can give him, the Italian guy. And I'll never forget, he took me to his penthouse in Paris where I heard all the city sounds. It frustrates me so. I've felt it, I've been there and I know what it's like and it's far superior. Well, Lisa, I must, Tahura, I apologize. I must also agree with Lisa. I, I, I mean, I've never been to the city, but I will say that I'm quite envious of the technology that I see in modern times. I do wish I were able to indulge. Technology. Ugh, you wouldn't need any of that in the country. Well, I was on an island and it's beautiful and quiet and you can hear animals and birds and oh, I long to go back. I want to be hung in anywhere but the city. Tahura, you mean you would prefer to, to be hung out in some country landscape where all the elements could get to you? Do you realize what you would look like after just two seasons? <laughs> oh, Mona, I don't age. I can be touched up. Oh. Don't you, don't you want to just look out at something other than four walls and thousands of people staring at you? Yes. I know I do. When I was painted, I was in a very warm and loving home. And after that, I was moved around from this place to that, these cold walls staring at nothing. The city life beats all of that. You couldn't believe it. When I was in the Italian guy's penthouse, I could hear the rain hitting the lead roof over our heads. And then I could hear the voices of everybody down in the city streets and they were making all kinds of sounds and they were alive. It was amazing. Oh, the smell of rain on, on flowers and the smell of it when it hits the dirt. I, I can feel it, I can taste it. I can almost see it. Just put a grass hold of it. And now girl. all you think is rain on concrete and a tin roof? <laughs> you were born in the wrong era. You should have been born during the romantic period because clearly you're more of a romantic that idealizes the, the raw elements of country life. Oh, if Lisa. You just live in the city, you'd know what I mean. May I ask you a question? Sure. I feel a, a little bit of a hypocrite for I do enjoy the country life more than the city people. 
But tell me, did you witness any technology of city life? Arnold, I saw the most amazing technological shifts that had to do with light. You know, I was created under candlelight, which has its own amazing qualities. And in fact, I believe I could hear the flames talking to me sometimes. And then by the time I was in the Italian guy's apartment, he had flames coming out of the wall and he called it gas. And now look out here, there's no flame, but we have light, that's technology. I don't know. Arnold, sometimes I see you staring at people with their phones up to their ears and they're only talking to themselves. Why is that appealing to you? They don't even engage. Sometimes I see them looking at me through some sort of device and I'm like, but be in the moment. I am in the moment. That's what I, they also do this thing. They, I've heard them call FaceTime and I could see them interacting, speaking with someone else through this tiny window. That's just it, isn't it? That's the difference between the city and the country. The city separates you between a, a tiny little window, whereas the country is wide open and you see each other, nothing, no barriers, no nothing. You get to be part of the world, be part of life. Well, I will Jasmine, can we please just talk about this calmly and rationally? But c come here, come I'm, down this hall. Uh, I'm tired of speaking rationally about this. Jasmine, We're talking about our marriage. I understand, but we just got here. We just settled into this town. Why do you want to pick up and move again? Your job can't demand it that often of you. All right, I'll be honest with you. Matthew, I just don't feel at home there. I, I don't relate to the people. I don't relate to the people in this city, I, at work. I even feel like you and I have gotten distant. Jasmine? Yes. You feel a distance between us, but, but I thought things were going well and we're gonna have a baby and everything. I know, and, and because we're gonna have a baby, it's all that more important that, we, that we're close and that we, we can establish a real home base. And you're on your phone all the time. You don't pay any attention to me. I'm on my phone all the time because I have nobody else to talk to. You're always so busy at work and always taking on new volunteer positions. It's like you're trying to move away from me at every time you can. Well, maybe I wouldn't be moving away from you if you paid some attention to me. Jasmine. Remember when we dated? Yes. It was different then. We Jasmine, please listen. We just moved from Cincinnati. We just settled in. And two years ago, we moved from Florida, all because of your job. But I don't think it's because of your job. I think you're running away from something, Jasmine. I think you're running away from us. Maybe you're right, Matthew. I haven't felt like it's been working since even before we decided to get pregnant. I thought maybe having a baby would, would change things, but now I'm having real, real doubts. You know what, Jasmine? I, I don't think this is about me and you. I think this is about you. you. You just aren't satisfied with who you are and what you have. <laughs> That's really like you, Matthew, to to blame it all on me. That if there's a problem in this relationship, it's me. Couldn't possibly be you. 
Well, sometimes it is you, isn't it? Sometimes it's not us or we or everyone. Sometimes it's one person who hasn't the courage to love who they are and keeps looking for new things and new places, hoping to find themselves. Well, maybe this time I'm right. Matthew, I, I can't be with you anymore. Jasmine. I'm getting out of here. Jasmine, wherever you go, Jasmine, there you are. Unless you're a painting on a wall. <laughs> I guess city life isn't all it turns out to be from Jasmine's plight. I think you're like that, Arnold. Me? Yes. Like what? I think, I think sometimes you are so caught up looking at everything else through that particular strange lens of death you always have behind you. And you don't see what's right in front of you. And what is right in front of me, Tahura? My own self-loathing, my own self-doubt? and death constantly reminding me of my mortality. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for death's cold grip to take me, but no, each time I fade away, each semblance of a reprieve from this boxed in existence happens. Someone goes ahead and retouches the painting and yet I'm reborn again, trapped in my own sphere. I think that's an excuse, Arnold. I think that's why you wish you had one of those phones so that you could look at life through the lens of something that puts a barrier between you and us. I think I'd rather look through that lens so I could be free from my barrier, Tahura. To, to, to be able to communicate with other people, to see other people love and feel and grasp the taste of life. Well, I just grasp the taste of death. Well, how would you know love if you've never looked at it in the face? You haven't, have you? No. You've got death hanging over your shoulder, but you're just using that as a symbol for all of the loss that you think you've had. And yet you could look at death as being life. How about that? Mona, you and I have talked about this when Arnold wasn't paying attention. Tell him. True, Arnold. You are covered in a shroud of darkness. And I will tell you both being much older than both of you, that I have lived and seen and loved so many people, both men and women, kings and queens and, and artists. And love is just everywhere. And it doesn't last, which is one thing I discovered. But that's no reason to shroud yourself in darkness, Arnold. That's easy for you to say, Lisa. You are adored and revered by all. And yet I am usually the look at the creepy guy with, with that skeleton. No one knows of me. And yet I'm trapped in obscurity indefinitely. But you're no. letting other people tell you what to feel, Arnold. What? Yeah, you can believe that you're the creepy guy because you hear people walk by and say that over and over again. But what makes you think they're talking about you and not what's behind you? Have you really thought about that? Look around. What, what do you want me to see? The love in front of me, Tahura? And what love is that? You? You, Lisa? Tahura? Why can't it be me? You know, one time when I was at the Louvre and I was somewhat familiar with the city of Paris having lived out in the wild for two years, a woman came up to me not too long ago and she got very close to me and she whispered, can you see me? Can you hear me? Can you feel me? 
But I couldn't respond, of course, because we're paintings. And then later, the custodians were speaking about her because she got in trouble for getting so close to me. And she was in love with the Eiffel Tower. So <laughs> love can be right in front of you, Arnold, as it is. And it can also lie in mysterious places like the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Even if it right, were right in front of me, what could I do about it? For 148 years, I have been trapped behind this painting, trapped in my own heart. There's no use for love, none of it. See, that's just my point, and you're missing it. I am perpetually young. I have been painted as a 13 year old, and yet I am a woman. I'm over a hundred years old. I have womanly thoughts and feelings. And just because you're painted with death behind you doesn't mean that you are death. Hura, I, yeah. Hura, at some point, I think you need to give up on this man. I have been with you to how many months now on this wall sharing space and eight. eight eight months now we've been together you're counting them <laughs> to her if a woman can fall in love with the eiffel tower you don't have to fall in love with a man or a painting of a man who's obsessed with death you can let yourself wander be free. You know hey, what? Andrea, come on over here. What? What is it? Look, sweetheart, it's just some real strange ones. Wow. Well, I, look at that, that guy with the skeleton playing the vi violin, or is that a fiddle? I think that's one of them guitars. Oh, you're so smart. Hey, he kind of looks a little bit like my Uncle Jethro. You know what? You're right. I always had a crush on your Uncle Jethro. Did I tell you that ever? Well, I hope you love me more, seeing as how we's been going steady for five months. Well, that's true, Phil, but I have to tell you, that Mr. Arnold Brocklin, he's pretty cute. I think that maybe if he weren't a painting, I might choose him over you. <laughs> now, Andrea, how can you say that when you know it hurts my heart? Oh, I'm sorry, darling. You know you're the only human man for me. Well, if I'm at risk of losing you to a painting that looks like my uncle, maybe I ought to reach into my pocket right now and pull out this here ring box. Phil, well, get down on your knee. I'm getting, I'm getting. <laughs> Andrea? Yes, Phil? You are the love of my life, and I have watched you grown up from a little girl when we was kids into the beautiful woman that you are now. And I just know that I want to spend the rest of my life with you. My love, will you marry me? I will, Phil. I will love you all my life. <laughs> I need a moment though, honey. You me. <laughs> I love it when you do little dances in public places. It's so cute. Come on, sweetheart. Let's go call the families and tell them. All right, I'll meet up with you just a second. Arnold, I don't know if you can see me, but I really do love you. And if you weren't a painting, I hope I'd be wearing your ring. Oh, all right, Phil. I'm catching up with you. Come on. Did you hear that? I heard it. 
Arnold, what it? <laughs> wow. Just like the lady with the Eiffel Tower. But to what end? To what point? I'm still here. You know, it's like just teasing me. That's the problem with the two of you. That's why you like the city over the country. The city is fast and everything moves quickly and then it's done. Like what you said, Mona, about love not lasting. That's a pessimistic attitude for somebody that loves the city. I think that's the way it is, but I don't feel that way. I think that it should last forever. The way that the, the way that the spring turns into the summer, turns into the fall and winter, and then it grows again into the spring over and over like life over and over again. And how about you, Tahura, if I may ask? You have been with child since your own inception, and yet you've never even, and you never will give birth to that child. How would you give that love? That love that you cannot have is a love that makes you feel pain. So I say to hell with love. Wow. Wow. <laughs> you know, Arnold, I'm just painted that way. That was low. It was hurtful. And I don't want to talk to you. Right now, Arnold. I didn't mean to hurt you. I, I, I'm just trying to state the obvious that we are trapped. And that is why I'm envious of everyone else. Not just because of their use of technology, but their ability to express themselves and to communicate and to share with that technology. And yet I am just within this own frame. May I make a suggestion? Both of you, again, are so much younger than I. And I believe when I was perhaps in my 200s, it's hard to recall, I finally got over that feeling of being trapped and being flat and one or two, two dimensional. And I realized that it's not such a good thing to be a human, to be free. And this life as a painting, once you get past the hump, as they say, it's actually not so bad. I think it's going to look up for you, Arnold. And to her, your sunny disposition will eventually sink in and you'll feel contented where you are as well. I know this, I've but lived it. So, so you're saying that I'm going to be cynical and just sink right into that with my sunny disposition and be like Arnold, who doesn't believe in anything? Some random stranger stopped to want to marry you. No, I believe that you will relax into being who you are and not wishing that you were somewhere else or something else. I did love once. I did. I was in love with the most beautiful woman, Pearl with the girl earring. Pearl with the girl earring? Excuse me. Girl with the pearl earring. I can see she's made you loony and as they Delirious say- at times. I called her Pearl. She was the only woman that I loved and she loved me in return. But where did that love get me? She was torn away. We were both sent to separate museums. And now I'm just in anguish every day for that love and I'm afraid to fall in love again. Arnold, do... when, when you fell in love with Pearl and when that lovely young country-like female that was here a moment ago told you how she felt about you, she's really simply reflect, reflecting herself. That's all love is. So you're saying love is ultimately one's own love reflected for yes. oneself? Yes. 
I don't know about all that, Lisa. I just know that I am in anguish and I do yearn to love again, but I'm afraid. You, you, you will love many times, believe me. You will love as well, Tahura, many, many times. See, that's the thing, Mona. He's pining away for something that he doesn't have and I'm right in front of him. I'm right in front of you. I see you, Tahura. And I must admit that my gaze does linger upon your beautiful visage, but there are times where I am doubtful of my own emotions. I am no longer able to give that love to anyone else. Andrea, I, yeah. I, a joke is a joke, but you keep calling me by my uncle's name. Are you really in love with him? Well, I don't know what came over me, Phil. I really do love you, but there's something about Arnold Brocklin's self-portrait with death, 1872. That's just stirred my innards like no one or no thing ever has. I'm so sorry. I don't want to cause you pain, but, but I do think I happen to be in love with this man. As I look into his eyes, I see a depth. I see pain. I see someone I want to be with. You're in love with my uncle or you're in love with this dang dong dang a dong painting? The dang dong dang a dong painting, Phil. I can't stand your uncle. I don't understand, Andrea. That's not even a real person. That's just like paint on paper. Well, I know it's crazy. I know. But I can't help what I feel, Phil. I look at him, my heart's a flutter. I tingle all over and I just wish, I long for this man to be real. Andrea, there is a real man who loves you standing right here in front of you. I know, Phil, I, I see you. I said yes to you, but I have to be honest. My heart is still longing for another. You don't think I'm going to stand here and marry you when you're telling me that you don't love me mostest? Well, I love you mostest of all three dimensional people I know. It's the best I can do right now. I'm sorry, honey. I'm afraid that ain't good enough for me. I knew I shouldn't have been honest with you. I think I want my ring back. Oh, all right. But, but I do want to marry you. I just love him. Well, you better learn where the right place is to put that love. Because unless you can love me and only me, no matter how many dimensions I have, then I never want to see you again. I'm gone. Oh, Phil. Okay, Arnold, I know it when I see it because I've experienced it. The Italian guy was just like her. He went loony for me. He went crazy for me. He was so infatuated and in love with me that one night he picked me up off the wall and he put me under his coat and I could feel his heart beat. And he took me into the custodial closet where we spent some time together alone. And then he whisked me away. He was so in love with me that he kidnapped me. And I know one of those when I hear and see them, that country-like female, she'll be back and she'll whisk you away, Arnold. And you'll, you'll know from that experience, you'll be released from everything. Perhaps. Mark, that's, my that's, word. A, that's quite an exciting tale, Lisa. It's but perhaps she's not the one I wish to whisk me away. 
It doesn't have to be the one. It's just getting whisked away. That's the thing. You need that. She's she you know said what? that. I'm sorry to her. Continue. Well, I don't really want to speak to you right now, so I'm going to say it to Mona so she can tell you. If Mona, he was for sale, I would encourage her to buy him and get him off this wall and out of my eyesight. Arnold, she said. Yeah, yes, I heard her, Lisa. You know, you haven't had a chance to really, to really thrive and get out there and live your life. This might be your, your one opportunity. If you can just make yourself a little more attractive the next time the country like gal comes in here. Well, uh, maybe you're right, uh, Lisa. Maybe I, I should embrace the inevitable. If you say that she's gonna take me away, perhaps she will. Perhaps she will be the one that will uh, offer me a beautiful love for no one here, of course, wants to be with me. Not you, Lisa and Tahura. You don't even want to talk to me anymore. I'm going to go find my man. Where is he hanging out? Oh, yeah, over there. <gasps> Arnie, it's me. I've given up everything for you. I've ended my engagement. I just want to be with you. And I noticed the guards taking a, a brief little conversational break. So I'm just going to reach over this velvet rope and I'm going to take you. Oh, well, it's, sir, take your hand off of me. This is my man. Sir, I, what do you mean I can't have this? Madam, what on earth are you doing? Step away from the painting and put your hands against that wall. Oh no, but don't it's make mine, a, and he's mine. Don't make a move. You think you could just walk into a museum like this and steal a painting off that wall? You don't understand. He's mine. I knew it from the moment I first laid eyes on him. Madam, you have some feverish fire in your eyes. I don't think you're a art thief and I've been a security guard long enough to know one when I see one. What on earth has gotten into you? I don't know. I'm not a thief. I'm just a woman in love. A woman who was about to throw her whole life away on the wrong man until I saw this painting. Are you telling me you're in love with that painting? I'm in love with the man in the painting. That man is dead a long time ago. No, his eyes are alive. Hmm. Let me tell you something, young lady. I'm gonna holster my pistol and I expect you're not going to run away. You think you're the first person to come here and fall in love with one of these pictures? Well, for my first year and a half on this job, I used to come here and stare at Mona Lisa over there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You look did. At that, look at that smile. Look at those eyes. Sometimes I could swear she was looking right back at me. And I'll admit it, I felt love for her. And I'll tell you the truth. It felt just as real as any love I ever felt for a woman. But- oh, There you go. Wait until I finish my tale. I'm listening. Cause after a while, I started to realize that this love I felt, well, it was really just fear. Fear of risking myself by loving someone who actually might be able to hurt me. Mister, are you finished with your story? Yes, I am. Because you're a very wise man. 
I just realized that I hadn't paid mind to that painting until I saw that ring box in Phil's pocket. I suppose Phil is some young swain. Oh yes, he's the most handsome man. Oh, I've made a fool out of myself because I'm scared to be a wife. Now let me tell you something, young lady. The reason I stopped coming here to pay court to Mona Lisa there is because I met myself my little Karen, a uh, real woman. And suddenly I knew I had to risk my heart if I was gonna find real happiness. Sir, I have been a fool. I need to go find my Philly boy. I think I saw him in the uh, Egyptian section trying to mount one of those big rock horses. Oh, yeah, that would be him. Thank you. Uh, tell him not to touch. Uh, go on. <laughs> Bye. Tahura, I love you. She said everything I wanted to say to you. Me, I feel the same way towards you, Tahura. You too. You're the first person, well, the first painting person that I felt this way for ever since Girl with the Pearl Earring left me. And I was too afraid, too afraid to tell you this. But to hell with it. I love you, Tahura. And every day for months, you would look out at the people staring at you and I would just watch you and look at you and never thought you could see me. And yet I know I've had love. When Paul painted me, he left, he left, but I didn't, but that was okay. He left me and I got to travel. I got to see the world in, ways no one could ever have seen if I had been kept where I was. And I never lost hope that I wouldn't find love because I believe that it's real. I believe that it's in front of me and I, you've been in front of me all this time. You've been in front of me. I, I see that they, oh, they covered up Mona Lisa with the curtain. It must be closing time soon. Dear patrons, the Museum of Art will close in five minutes. Please take your time to look at the final paintings and make your way to the exit. Thank you. Well, Andrea? Andrea? Phil? Look, they hung a big black drape over the Mona Lisa there, and they just left these two paintings together here. You know what, Phil? I may be silly, but I sure hope that tonight, not only you and I will be celebrating our love, but wouldn't it be funny if the woman with the mango and Arnold got together and loved <laughs> each other as much as we do? You think that's why they covered up the Mona Lisa? Because they wanted to let the woman with the mango and Arnie over here spend some private time together? Well, I can believe that, Phil. Don't make fun of me. I'm not making fun of you. I just, I just feel like I, I want to give you this ring back. Phil, I want you to give me that ring back. I'm not afraid to be your wife anymore. I love you forever. Oh, I love you too, honey. Here, I'm gonna stick this right on that finger of yours. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Come on, let's go get on one of those big horses in the Egyptian section. <laughs> All right. Tahura, I don't have a ring to give you but I promise you to give you my heart as long as we're near each other. Mona said 
She said, if I was just patient, that one day you would see me. And she did tell me that love lasts in different ways. And I believe that even if you had found love with Pearl, that it's still a lasting love. And if you have it with me, it's like the way spring turns into the summer, turns into the fall and winter, and then it starts over again. And it's okay to love more than once, isn't it? Because there's room. Yes, it's more than okay. It's necessary for me to love you, Tahora. And I, to hell with technology. I just needed a canvas and a beautiful painting like you. Jasmine, Jasmine, come on. Please come and talk to me. No, I refuse to speak to you. Jasmine, oh, look, they covered up the Mona Lisa. (sighs) That means we don't have much time. Say what you need to say. What I need to say is I'm sorry. What? (laughs) I'm sorry. And you're right. It's never just about you. It's always about us. Matthew, that means a lot to me. It means you listened to me. You heard me. Of course I did. And I'd follow you anywhere, no matter how many times we have to move. Thank you. Because all I want is to know that you're there for me and that you have my back and that you really see me. (laughs) I do. In fact, for too long, it's like I've been covering you with that black screen like they put over the picture, but I'm not going to do that anymore. Thank you. It's uncomfortable. (laughs) Hey, (laughs) let's go to the Egyptian section. There's some guy climbing up on one of the horses and they're arresting him. Oh, I love when that happens. Come on. on. (laughs) You get this thing off of me. Lisa. (laughs) <laughs> well, we oh, proclaimed our love to each other, Lisa. You know, I could hear a little bit. It was like when I was stuck with that relic of St. Francis's thumb during World War II in the attic of the Notre Dame, and I could hear things muffled. I could kind of hear what was going on and I'm so happy for both of you. You did it. We did. And I will just say, still prefer the country. Dear patrons, the Museum of Art is now closed. And that is our show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for being here. If you're already on screen, go ahead and stay on screen. If you're not on screen, come on screen. And let's say a nice big hello. Uh, uh, Everybody on the count of three, let's give a nice big bow to our audience. Here we go. One, two, three. Folks, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Ken Adams. I'm the artistic director director of Synergy Theater. The woman with a mango was Nikki Vilas. Arnold Brocklin was Arastu Direction. Mona Lisa was Eileen Tumlin. And my off-screen partner was Lynn Shields. We had such a delight for performing you tonight, performing for you tonight. Thank you so much for being here. We are here every Thursday at 6 o'clock p.m. and every Friday at 7 o'clock p.m. Please come back and see us. Tomorrow night is our special uh, Halloween show, Spontaneous Edgar Allan Poe. So come on back and watch us uh, make up a whole bunch of stories and short plays in the style of the master of horror, Edgar Allan Poe. Thank you so much, everybody. Stay safe. Be well. Synergy Theater loves you. Good night.